Good morning, folks. We've got some incredible stories to hit today and a special clip from me and Kat, our CEO and my wife. If you passed kindergarten math, you realize that makes her my boss twice. She says I'm to start at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star not entirely quiet, but without big flares or eruptions in Earth's direction. The filaments do continue to get active. Some are releasing. Meanwhile, the active regions have begun to appear on the north now as well. It's been the southern hemisphere's show thus far. Here at Earth, the solar wind is enhanced from the now departed coronal hole, mid-range intensity stream only, bringing a mid-range geomagnetic instability that we will monitor today in case it slips into storm condition. Before we start, I'd like to mention I am doing my third stretch in Facebook jail. The truth apparently violates community standards. Three days in the penalty box. Let's go to cosmology and take three slices, starting with the recognition of how tiny little differences in the reionization period could have tremendous changes in what they think happened during the evolution of the cosmos, like the difference between turning left or right and then walking a thousand miles. We've got more problems coming up for cosmology as they better spec the deepest reaches of space they can probe, this one with primordial deuterium. Lastly, in cosmology, the long-standing Hubble tension has had some theories about its rectification, but one of the leading ones is debunked here, righteously. In the correction realm as we switch, perhaps you recall our video called Magnetic Reconnection in Cosmic Plasma. The point was to note a critical deficiency in frozen in-field models, and over the last three or four years it has now become mainstream science that this rule is violated. It's one of the key predictions of plasma cosmology. It's not enough just to point out errors, it's predicting what will and will not be found, like dark matter. In an awesome upward return current study of the global electric circuit, they have confirmed that strong lightning doesn't just affect the ionosphere above, but the magnetosphere above that. It's a much bigger picture of the global electric circuit than is traditionally had. And so we go back to that ion slippage paper with the frozen in field lines commentary, come down a bit more to find they are discussing downward field aligned currents. We came up with the lightning a moment ago, now we'll go back down. We have pure confirmation of the nearly instantaneous forcing of the solar wind impact to the ionospheric current system, which is directly tied into that global electric circuit. The number one thing missing from climate models is the super rapid forcing potential of these electromagnetic couplings with the sun which includes that IMF to system coupling of 5 to 11 percent we reported yesterday. Heading to the effects on pipelines when we take geomagnetic impacts, I've seen studies on grids, aviation, communication, navigation. We knew the pipelines should be attractive targets for the energy, and they are. Not just the current flow within them, but the charge differential between them and the ground could induce arcing. We're off to two Australian professors making one of the biggest claims I've ever seen in this field. They say the stories of the Seven Sisters, like many other stories suspiciously similar across the world and time, is more than a hundred thousand years old, originating in the first super civilization on Earth, which fragmented and then spread across the world taking the stories with them. Well, that's one way to do it. Or they all saw similar things in the sky at the same times and the stories followed. Not to mention they all discuss meeting other creatures who came down from the sky and told them what happened. But hey, here's the other explanation. Maybe a hundred thousand year game of telephone worked. If you've ever played it, you doubt it as much as I do. Last news story comes to the mapping of the field excursion 35,000 years ago, the Mono Lake Magnetic Excursion. This map has been sitting in a master's thesis since 2011, just got put on archive last night. Of course, this is about the time in geology when isotopes begin to betray the truth, making 1,000 year errors at times, but even those are not enough to keep us from seeing the pattern. Isotopes notwithstanding, Mono Lake was likely at 36,000 and Lachamp likely earlier at 48, but even still, let's take this, it's an 11 to 13,000 year cycle, where at that exact time since the last one, we're seeing Earth's field go into excursion again now. This is the premise of our Cosmic Disaster series, our newest book, and the accelerations of the current shift accelerate our own timelines. Speaking of timelines, first up is the visitation dates and lottery for those wanting to have a dedicated spot at the campground. I will be emailing those of you who said you want an in-person visit today. After the second lottery, it will be first come, first serve, but now, let's see the video we were going to put on Kickstarter before deciding to go another way. Hi, I'm Ben Davidson. I'm Kat Davidson. CEO of Space Weather News. 
and this is Observer Ranch. We run Space Weather News and the Suspicious Observer's YouTube channel, with 500,000 subscribers largely focused on one thing, awareness and preparation for a major change coming to the Earth, the Sun, indeed the entire solar system. Our community annual events need a new home and a hands-on educational experience about survival and prepping among like-minded individuals is one of the best ways to foster independence and preparation. This will have all the amenities of a normal campground, but with an educational aspect. The campground itself will be about 30 acres on the larger Observer Ranch property. It is located at elevation and far from the oceans, something every prepper should at least consider. To the fullest extent possible, we will use local, use sustainable, encourage natural preservation, and as you can see, all of our rewards are digital, carbon neutral, or are part of the long-lasting design. The rewards are pretty simple. There are permanent thank yous, individual shout outs on our popular morning show, sponsorship of specific sites at the campground, and guaranteed first shots at booking for observer events, our major community gatherings with special guests, and where we all come together. Your ideas were fantastic. Everything from an observer's library to a stargazing area to preppers classes. And we've incorporated those things into our nearly decade-long research into exactly what this campground should be. A few words about the features we want in addition to the campground. An observer's library would be wonderful. I have many of the best books already and would love to create a resource out of them, and more. There will be survival structures and tools from shelter to irrigation ditching, and seeing them, using them in person, cannot be supplemented. I also want to mention the science experiments we can do, including monitoring the global electric circuit, lightning, and how telluric currents react to space weather. All of the community events are a form of prepper support. The inspiration and conversation now deserves a relevant venue with appropriate resources to help you at home. This is far more than a campground. This is an idea for an experience tailor-made for the existing observers community and those interested in learning more about prepping survival, or the science that touches them, becoming ever more relevant by the day. We have always done these projects and events together, and for each other. We hope we'll see you there. On ObserverRanch.com, you can find out all the information you'll need in the accredited button, learn about getting a spot at the ranch or being a part of the campground operation. If you want to make your mark on the actual campground, help the community into the uncertain future, or just say thank you, we greatly appreciate your support. Subscribe and we'll do the news all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.35 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.